Hello everyone, welcome to another video. I hope you're doing well. Today we're talking about a method of CO2 injection that not a lot of people are talking about. Ever since I started using CO2 in my planted tanks, I pretty much always go for regular in-tank CO2 diffusers. They're simple but very effective in my opinion. And I especially like the ones with the brown ceramic disc because they produce really tiny bubbles. But I do have to admit that sometimes those tiny bubbles can become a bit annoying. All these micro bubbles floating around is kind of distracting and it spoils the view a little bit. Me personally, I enjoy my tanks the most at the end of the day, at the last hour of the photo period, when the CO2 has already turned off and there are no micro bubbles visible. A few weeks ago, I decided to purchase an inline CO2 diffuser to try and see if that is less annoying. But I quickly discovered that this only made things worse. Yes, the bubbles were even smaller, but now there were so many of them, the aquarium almost appeared cloudy because of the mist of CO2. All of this happened around the time where I was just beginning with the big shallow project. And I knew that in a shallow tank, a regular CO2 diffuser is not going to be a good option. Because the tank is only 30 cm high, the CO2 bubbles would reach the surface far too quickly and I would waste a lot of CO2. And the option of using an inline diffuser and having a cloudy tank all the time did not really excite me either. So I started looking for other options. A few weeks before that, I made a video about this beautiful aquarium. And here you can see how clear everything is, even though CO2 was being added while I was filming. So how is that possible? Well, below this aquarium were two external filters, and each filter had their own CO2 reactor. After I had seen that tank, I started looking more into CO2 reactors, because this could be a good solution for the big shallow. The idea behind the CO2 reactor is that CO2 is mixed with water in a chamber before it enters the aquarium. Water and CO2 gas enter the reactor from the top, then they are both pushed to the bottom of the reactor. But the CO2 bubbles always want to float up, so they keep rising to the top, being pushed down again, basically until they are completely dissolved. So the water that leaves the reactor does not have any micro bubbles and is nicely saturated with CO2. So after I had done some research, I really wanted to try a CO2 reactor for my big shallow. So I went ahead and ordered one from the same guy who made the reactors for the tank I showed you earlier. These are custom made and come in a bunch of different varieties. The one I ordered also has a bubble counter and a special attachment to hold my pH probe. Installation was pretty easy. I first unplugged the Oasa Biomaster and decided where was the best place to put the reactor. The reactor had to be placed upright, so I decided to mount it on the side panel of the cabinet. After it was screwed in place, all I had to do was refit the filter hose, add the CO2 line to the bubble counter and insert the pH probe in the first chamber. After that I could start the filter and the CO2. A quick check to see if there weren't any leaks and we are done. It's been about a month since I installed the CO2 reactor, so let's talk about my experience so far. The main reason why I bought this reactor was so I wouldn't have any CO2 bubbles in the tank and distracting my view. And that has been exactly the case. I don't have any CO2 mist, the water is crystal clear and you wouldn't know this tank has CO2 injection unless you checked under the hood. So yeah, I'm really happy that I made the decision to go for a CO2 reactor. Now let's look at a few pros and cons of a CO2 reactor. Starting with the pros, uh, one, no mist. Obviously that's a pro and that's what I've been talking about this entire video. And number two, 
no visible equipment. This is another huge plus for me, there is no visible diffuser, there is no ugly CO2 tubing inside the tank, so it looks very clean. And number 3, efficiency. The CO2 reactor is very efficient because pretty much all of the CO2 is dissolved in the water, so we were not losing any CO2. With a regular diffuser, a lot of micro bubbles still reach the water surface and then they are lost. Number 4, low maintenance. Well, it's a bit soon to say, but I think I only need to clean the reactor once in 6 months or so. Basically, because it sits inside the cabinet where it's dark, it shouldn't really get dirty. And number 5, it's quiet. With a regular in-tank diffuser, you have CO2 bubbles that are being pushed through a very fine membrane. This sometimes creates a very high-pitched sound, almost like a whistle. The CO2 reactor, on the other hand, is completely quiet. And then the cons. Number one, it's expensive. My reactor was custom made, so it's not very cheap, especially if you compare it to a regular diffuser. But that said, it doesn't have to be. If you know how to work with PVC pipes, you can easily build a reactor yourself and save a lot of money. Number two, no mist. Even though this was the first on the list of pros, it's also a con. There have been a few studies done saying that plants actually benefit a lot from coming in contact with CO2 bubbles. So if a small CO2 bubble is touching a plant, that plant can actually utilize it slightly better than if it was just totally dissolved. And number three, it's bulky. Uh, this one speaks for itself. A reactor is a lot bigger than an in-tank diffuser or an inline diffuser. Um, it's bigger and you also need to place it inside the cabinet and it takes up some space over there. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a downside. And number four, it's not versatile. Uh, you can only use a CO2 reactor in combination with an external filter or a sump. So if you have a hang on the back filter or an internal filter, you can't really use this system. And number five, the last one is flow reduction. So in order to use a CO2 reactor, you need to have a pretty strong filter or a pretty strong pump. And because the water has to go through all these stages inside the reactor, and it's not one direct line from the filter to the tank, you're also losing a bit of flow. So if you're planning to use a CO2 reactor, I definitely recommend to use an oversized filter. These are just a few pros and cons I've found so far. I'm sure there are more benefits and downsides. And I've only been using this reactor for a month now, so I'm by no means am I an expert on this topic right now. I just want to share my experience and talk about this topic because I think a lot of people get bothered by the CO2 mist, but they might not know about the CO2 reactor. So I'm curious what you guys think of a CO2 reactor. Would you consider using this yourself on your planted tank? Let me know in the comments. If you have any other questions about the reactor, let me know as well and I'll try to answer them for you. Hope you enjoyed this video, I'll see you next time.